Took a delivery from Dieter Schmidt Fine Tools today on April 20th, 2020. It arrived here to the true north in five days flat from Berlin, Germany. Not bad considering pandemic pandemonium. Fine Tools is a bit like a German Lee Valley. They mainly cater to carbohydrate processors. Though they have an interesting selection of tools for everybody. First up, a meter stack. Vogel. Next up, some screw pliers from Japan. Another set of screw pliers from Japan. I had a whole bunch of these little needle files. A set of files, not needle, but halfway in between. They're called Habilis files. Set of hex keys from Japan with little ball detents for holding on to fasteners. This is neat. Subscribing gauge. And a diameter gauge. Again from Japan. Hey, let's start with the vocal meter stick. Made in Germany, PVC case. Comes with a test certificate in multiple languages. Now on the left hand side we can see that it's a full meter in length, it's stainless, roast free. I have no idea what that symbol is. If you have any idea, let me know in the comments. That symbol indicates that it is laser engraved rather than photo etched. What that means is that these divisions are going to be very, very thin and precise, and accurate over a longer distance. There's a V made here, not quite sure what that is. A made in Germany, European label, and I'm not sure what those codes are for. And at the other end, we have a product ID number. Now, I got this meter stick because I want to be able to measure from either the lower part or from the upper part, depending on what exactly my, my, my purpose was. I really do like having rulers that are of a single measurement. These rulers that we see here that combine metric and English, uh, they, they can be a little bit annoying sometimes because sometimes you just, you just need to measure from the bottom, but you want centimeters or you might need to measure from the top and you want inches. This was my standby. It's a ruler that comes from Lee Valley Tools. It's actually a pretty nice rule. Uh, it's nice and matte in color. The numerals stand out well. The lines are well defined. But put it in comparison with this new meter stick and what you will see is these divisions. These laser etched divisions are much, much finer. It's moderately magnetic. Compare that to this ruler, it's strongly magnetic. Now the only thing I'm not particularly impressed with is the packaging job that Dieter Schmidt did. This ruler was put in a little too small of a box and, well, it was bent a little too tightly and now it's not properly laying flat anymore. If you have any ideas on how I could fix this, let me know in the comments, please. Next up are the locking screw pliers from Engineer. Engineer is well known for having these standard screw pliers. Check out the tips of these. They're designed for grabbing onto a screw and being able to, to reef it out like so. However, th these pliers only are able to get so much power, so much gripping power. The locking pliers, on the other hand, they have compound leverage, so these should be even more effective. Take a look at their jaws. Now, in comparison to my current locking pliers, these new Japanese models are really compact and have much less play in their jaws. These new compact gripping pliers nicely complement my existing pair. Function is similar to a typical locking plier. You got an adjustment nut at the end of the handle, clamp it down with a click. One difference is that it doesn't have a release lever and instead you just have to prise it apart with your hands, like so. Not too difficult for small pliers like this. Now, larger locking pliers without a release lever can be a little bit more challenging because the tension is higher and when you do release them, I do find that it tends to throw the part. These little guys, in contrast, tend to be a little bit easier to release. 
The handles are plastic sheathed green. Looks like glass filled nylon, but there's no markings to be sure. Last till mirror over molds, well done. They feel similar to the over molds on good power tools. Not a huge fan of over molds though, as they can degrade with oil, solvents, and time. So here we see the branding engineer chromoly stamped in the front. I really appreciate the Japanese sense of humor. Just check out the model names for these. Neji Saurus. Doesn't it look like a little Godzilla? I think so. Here are some small needle files from Valorb, Switzerland, who make a very complete line of files in all sizes and cuts. These are cut number two. The only cut that Schmidt offers, which is roughly 38 teeth per centimeter. Stated hardness is HRC66 and the teeth are cut very nicely. Integrated handles, marked F. Dick Swiss made. These are Habilis files, a bit biglier than the needle files, and a bit smaller than regular files. I suppose they're sized to fit the hands of more primitive humans. Hmm. Nice human, presumably modern human, touch of having all the files oriented stamped side up in the sleeve. The cut is number one, or 25 teeth per centimeter. Reverses branding, says Glardon Valorb. Integrated handles are about four inches long. The teeth, again, very nice, hardened to HRC 66 or higher. The Asai catcher wrenches from Japan. My main workhorses were VAT handles and Bondus L wrenches. So I got these for the ball ends and that they have a little fastener retention mechanism built in, which is basically just a spring-loaded ball bearing similar to what Vera tools use. I have plenty of hex wrenches, so I got this set only up to six millimeters, and that should cover the majority of fasteners I ever encounter. Plastic holder holds the keys very well, a bit too well perhaps, and the smallest 1.5 key has a bit of a bend to it. I wonder if it's because it was stuck in there so tightly. Hmm. Here we can see the catcher ball in action with the 6, 5, 4, and 3 millimeter wrenches. The smaller sized keys don't have a catcher ball though. Finish is bright chrome. Labeling appears to be electro etched. At least in sizes 2.5 up to 6. Sizes 1.5 and, and 2 are not marked. And up now is the Matsui Japan Scriber Gauge. It comes with a little too tight vinyl sleeve that I'm going to promptly throw away. And an information leaflet, typical of Japanese products, made of tissue paper and folded over a dozen times like origami. Not too much readable to me, though it says, for the professional. It's very flattering. This gauge is for scribing a line. It's a much better option than ruining the tips of your good calipers. The vernier is at a tenth of a millimeter, and the etching is very clear and easy to read. Oddly, there are some inconsistencies with the etching like these divisions not being complete, and the stainless hardened and the Made in Japan being a tiny bit lopsided. I better check the accuracy. First here at 3 centimeters. Now at 6 centimeters. Seems pretty accurate. The head moves smoothly. The finish is good, at least where it counts. However, the broaching here in the shoulders is a little bit unclean. And lastly, we have the Shinwa Radius and Diameter Gauge. Shinwa is not quite Michitoyo in reputation, and they've outsourced many of their products to China, though this one's still made in the land of the rising sun. The divisions are nice and clear. Let's test it. Six millimeters, five, four, and three millimeters. Looks good. Hope you enjoyed this delivery. I did. And now I need to make more room for duels. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.